Hello, friends. Many of us learned in school that Russian and American territories are separated by the Bering Strait, which is about 86 kilometers wide. However, American and Russian lands are actually closer to each other than that because of two islands located on the strait, making the distance between the two countries about four kilometers. What's interesting, however, is that it would take at least 21 hours to travel such a seemingly short distance. In this video, you'll find out why that is the case. The Americans refer to the Bering Strait Islands as the Diomede Islands, while the Russians call them the Gvozdev Islands. The Inuit and Yupik people began to settle the islands more than 3,000 years ago. A Russian explorer named Semon Desnev discovered the Bering Strait in 1648. Desnev reported on two islands located on the strait. However, one of them was also discovered by Vitus Bering. Later, one of them was also discovered by a Vitus Bering expedition in 1728. Both of the islands were mapped a little later. They received their modern names at the beginning of the 19th century, thanks to a lieutenant of the Russian Empire fleet. In 1867, Alexander II sold Alaska to the Americans. At the time, he believed those lands to be useless and that too much money was being spent on their maintenance. In general, he thought that a little extra gold never hurts. After the sale of Alaska, the border began to pass through the Diomede Islands. At first, those changes did not affect the local populations. They continued to consider themselves to be one people until as late as 1948. After the Second World War, relations between the USSR and the US deteriorated, as a result of which the border was closed. As it often happens, ordinary people suffered greatly because of the politics. The Russian military settled on Big Diomede Island, and civilians were forcibly relocated to Siberia. As a result, the border was nicknamed the Ice Curtain. But years passed, and the so-called Ice Curtain began to melt. On August 7, 1987, an American swimmer named Lynn Cox, who had previously crossed the English Channel and the Strait of Magellan, swam the distance between the American and the Soviet islands, when the water temperature was only 6 degrees Celsius. The brave athlete was accompanied by Alaska residents on kayaks. It took her two hours to swim the distance. Two presidents, Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan, congratulated her. Lynn Cox is believed to be the symbol of the end of the Cold War. In 1989, the two countries signed an agreement allowing travel between the islands for the residents of the Bering Strait region. In practice, however, the ice curtain fell only in 2015. According to the agreement, indigenous peoples of Alaska can visit their relatives in Chukotka and vice versa. In order to cross the border, first they have to receive an invitation from the relatives across the border. It is permitted to visit for a maximum. It is permitted to visit for a maximum period of 90 days. The Diomede Islands are separated by a truly insignificant distance of some 3,750 meters. However, if you wanted to travel back in time, crossing that distance is an excellent way to do so. The islands are separated by an international dateline and are located in different time zones. The time difference is 21 hours. For this reason, the Big Diomede is sometimes referred to as Tomorrow Island and Little Diomede as Yesterday Island. This curious fact became known internationally in March 2021 when a TikTok blogger nicknamed Lo posted a video explaining how one can quickly get from Russia to the United States on foot. However, this is not true. Because of climate change, the ice between the islands is not as strong as it used to be. The video went viral and was viewed by millions of people. After that video, many media outlets wrote about it and lots of people around the world learned about the two interesting islands. You can have a lot of fun with the islands. For example, you can celebrate your birthday twice in one year or celebrate the new year first on Big Diomede and then go back in time to celebrate it again on Little Diomede. The only issue is that it is not as easy to travel back and forth. There is no permanent population on Big Diomede, only a military detachment of border guards who arrived there in 1941. A six-room wooden house, a warehouse, 
and a bathhouse were brought for them on a steamer from Vladivostok along with food, clothing, and weapons. Life in that area of the world is harsh. Winter lasts nine months. You have to survive not only the low temperatures, but also the very harsh winds. Moreover, a thick fog envelops the island for 300 days a year. For this reason, helicopters don't travel there often, arriving only once every 24 months to deliver food and mail. Only contract soldiers serve in that unit, and it's worth mentioning that they do have access to basic technologies, such as a TV, a phone, and so on. There are no military personnel on Little Diomede. Instead, there is a single settlement also called Diomede. When you look at the settlement from above, you get the feeling that it is one of the most secluded places on the planet. It is home to a modest Inuit community, numbering a little over 100 people. There are about 30 buildings on the island, including residential buildings built mainly in the 1970s and the 1980s. Despite its modest appearance, the settlement has a laundromat and a medical office located on the top floor of one of those buildings. There is also a school from which you can see the Russian island, a library, a heliport, and a satellite dish for television, telephone, and internet access. The island store carries a limited supply of food, drinks, clothing, firearms, ammunition, and fuel. Anything that cannot be bought at the local store must be ordered by mail from Anchorage, which takes a long time to arrive, especially in the winter. As in many other native settlements in Alaska, the import and sale of alcohol is prohibited. Electricity is provided by diesel generators and water is collected from the mountain spring, which is then processed and stored in a reservoir to be used in the winter. Due to permafrost, laying an underground pipeline is difficult, so residents must manually carry the water. Work on the island is limited to places that the settlement itself needs, such as a post office, a school, and a medical office. Despite the high prices of food, the Inuit have grown accustomed to shopping and are no longer dependent on hunting and fishing. Still, some continue to collect moor eggs, a seabird that is widespread in the Northern Hemisphere, hunt walruses, and make souvenirs that are popular on mainland Alaska. The average annual income on the island is about $25,000. It's not a lot considering the high prices and their dependence on imported goods. For example, laundry detergent can cost as much as $45. In short, life on the island is not only difficult, but also expensive. Recently, the island's problems have been exacerbated by climate change. It is getting warmer every year, so the traditional way of life suffers. Many islanders, especially those who are younger, think about moving. However, despite the many hardships, travelers often note that the locals seem happier than many residents of big cities. Friends, that's all for today. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.